I but mean, listen, you because you were you were saying earlier that like you know before you before this foundation thing mm-hmm. and everything was going on, like you nobody would touch you in the industry, yeah, right? No. It was this it was this Big Brother article yeah. that came out mm-hmm. where, where you called Stevie Williams, yeah, a name, uh, yeah. So um, I had an interview when I was fifteen. Crazy story on this whole interview. Fifteen years old, by the way. No, you weren't sponsored yet. Or you were just I was, getting. I just got. I was just off. I thick. was sponsored. I was on the. So I was on the America at this time. Okay. But now this is like my transition between Think and Baker. But by the time the thing came out, right. obviously the Baker thing was no no more. Right. Okay. Um. But so yeah, this was two thousand, I believe. Mm-hmm. So that's fifteen, and um, I shot this. I shot a couple photos with um Brian Gaberman, mm. John Miner, and Brian Gaberman came up to skate with me for a couple of days. Mm-hmm. We shot a whole interview in like a day or two and John and I were working on like something for America, like an introduction, like an AM thing, or some sort of like an AM video mm-hmm. introducing thing that would probably end up in 411. Actually, I think it did. It up, there was like a couple of tricks that ended up in mm-hmm. 411. But, um, so we shot this interview. Mm-hmm. It was supposed to go to slap. And, oh. yeah. Mm. Yeah, very, it's kind of strange. It was supposed to go to slap magazine. The slap wanted to do something because, Joe had known me. Joe was maybe... I don't know if it was Lance doing... It was Lance or Joe was still the, the photo editor at the time. But um, Brian wanted more money for the photos. Mm. Big Brother offered more money for the photos. Oh, wow. So he sold the photos to Big Brother. Mm-hmm. And I remember hearing, hey, you're going to have a Big Brother interview. I was like, bitching, dude. Yeah. This shit's hilarious. Big I, Brother was a shit. Too. Yeah, it was, it was funny. Great, like, yeah, I was like, yeah. dude. Great magazine. So all of a sudden, you know, what would have been maybe a more mature interview... Turn into going, I get to just have fun and talk shit. Right. I'm going to be like, it's going to be a whole different thing. Mm-hmm. You know, like, it was Big Brother. Like, I said, this Mac, I mean, you guys seen the documentary that came out on it? Yeah, it's great. Yeah. it's But like, anybody that's like, thinks like this is a normal magazine, it's like, watch the documentary. This is a bunch of, like, I'm not going to call them dumb, but they're like, just a bunch of, like, bunch of fucktards. Yeah, a bunch of fucktards <laughs> that knew exactly what they were doing, yeah. man. And yeah. It was meant to be yeah. a hellacious magazine. It was yeah. just a fuck off. Like, So you got an interview by Chris Naracco. I got an interview by Naracco. Yeah. What was his first opening question to you? When did you de- when did you decide you wanted to be Jim Greco? And so my <laughs> response was, like, fuck Jim Greco. Right. And then, so like it went straight, straight into like talking shit, not like a, hey, how you doing? Or... And me being 15, I thought I was being like funny. I'm like, fuck Jim Greco. I think I said, I want to be like Johnny Thunders. Because I knew like Jim liked Johnny Thunders. Okay. I'm like, oh, he's going to laugh at this. And because this is like, that's like his idol. I right. thought. And it was like. But you had nothing against him, right? You were, you liked. No, Jim. yeah. Jim was the homie. Yeah, I thought. Yeah, like, yeah, he was yeah. cool. Whatever. Of course. The interview just straight into like him insulting me mm-hmm. and me taking the bait on some shit and being an insecure teenager. Mm-hmm. And then like. Some of the other questions, which was kind of also fucking wild, like so, like making fun of my speech impediment. Okay. I think like the third one of the like, very first questions too was like, "You sound gay or something, mm-hmm. or do you get called a lesbian or some like something along the line of like about my like sexuality?" Yeah, uh, because I have a lisp, mm-hmm. but that's not a lisp; it's a speech impediment. Okay. And me being in um, growing up with um, we we'll call it a learning different, you know. I don't know what you call it. It's just I have a, you know, a speech problem. Sure. So I was already very kind of like, you know. Um, insecure. Sh- very, and, very insecure about yeah. it. I don't like speaking. I mm-hmm. still don't like speaking. I mean, uh, I've apologized to you guys 10 times. Like, You're killing I don't, it tonight, dude. Mm-hmm. I don't like my voice. It's, it's very hard to speak. And for many years, I never spoke because I can't say R's. I can't say a lot of words, especially mm-hmm. R's. Yeah. And like I said, like, thanks, mom. You gave me yeah. Tori. You know, like I have to like really <laughs> think about like Roger. I have to think about the peanut butter they used to put on the roof of my mouth to like R. Like, like <laughs> oh, they uh, they used to be a trick. Yeah, like the oh, speech yeah. teacher would be like, okay, lick the peanut butter off the roof of your mouth <laughs> to learn how to use your tongue. R. Oh, well, it's t- funny because you never really think about how yeah, do you yeah. formulate you mo- words because most do it. People know how to speak, yeah. and I just I don't didn't, speak didn't like you know, happen, <laughs> right? You know, so it was like straight into like making fun of me and so now the tone has changed I'm like kind of like fuck you dude mm-hmm. and so I started saying just some rotten things and stuff that I'm actually obviously you know very ashamed of now yeah. but at the time you know it was weird because here you have an adult interviewing me and somebody's not telling me to say hey 
that's not cool, man. You're 15 yeah. years old. Yeah, I'm 15. Yeah. I'm doing this interview, and I haven't even told my parents about it. Right. Like, I don't think that's even legal, maybe, to do... Sure. To print something with a, a minor in a magazine. I don't know. I, I'm guessing that's illegal. No, I've never even thought of it. Yeah. So, you know, and first off, yeah, I'm just just a kid, not even knowing what I'm doing, trying to be funny to a magazine. Like, oh, I'm going to fucking talk some shit. Sure. It's Big Brother. The tone, the context. A lot of people don't know the context of this whole interview either. The tone is completely different. If you read it, you might be like, okay, there was an adult that kind of gave this kid some bait, and this kid doesn't know what he's doing. He's just being an ignorant fucking jackass. Okay, right. A very... A fucking total chump, you know, like mm -hmm. chump. What your wife, what your wife was calling you? Yeah, yeah, fucking, yeah. just <laughs> terrible. Like, but not knowing, but I can remember coming home from school and like sweating and being nervous because I know I'm about to do an interview, but thinking it's kind of cool too. Right. And I remember drawing, like having like a sketchbook open and like drawing as I'm doing it, and I was like pissed off because I knew I was like just saying stuff I wasn't like really thinking about it. I was just like upset that this guy's kind of talking shit to me. Yeah, you know? okay. And I, I still actually have this doodle. Mm, that's once weird. Once again, horror. Yeah, right, yeah. But <laughs> it is like in my sketchbook, you know, from being a kid. Uh -huh. But it's like bright red and very jaggedy and like black. So obviously I was very angry as right. I'm doing this, which is looking back now, I'm like, why did I not just go, hey, fuck you. Like, what kind of interview is this? Sure. As an adult, I would be like, hey, when you have some real questions, Let's talk about this. Yeah. But at 15 and thinking, going, oh, that's for. Yeah, you're just going to be a smart ass. Yeah, this Back is. Back home, yeah. I mean, what was the thing? It was like Big Brother's Stupid Magazine with like the guy sniffing glue or something. So, like, that was. I was like, oh, no, but it's cool. It's just a stupid magazine, anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, it's totally bizarre because, as I said, as an adult, I'd be like, okay, interview over. Who the fuck are you? Yeah. Fucking kick rocks, dude. Like, right. Call me back when you have a Or question. at least have the ability to change the conversation yeah. and make and, it normal. And instead, you I know, I'm yeah. just going, well, fuck that. Like, so I said some actual, like, stuff to me that, like, like I said earlier, like, mm -hmm. super offensive stuff that wasn't, it's never really been brought up. But, like, I was more, like, saying stuff on, like, no sexuality thing. Like, they called me gay and I was super offended by it because I was very, insecure with my sexuality i'm 15 mm -hmm. i'm not sure exactly if i like boys or girls well i'm just a just a dude i never even thought about it. i'm just a kid just yeah, a boy yeah, yeah. and at that time too i was a very like kind of very feminine looking boy too i had very soft skin i have some pretty eyes you know like <laughs> okay. nice green eyes they're really beautiful long hair but i was always mistaken like for a girl okay when i'm with like my mom like oh you and your daughter are so beautiful and so i heard that constantly mm -hmm. always like oh, he's such a beautiful girl. And so, like, at 15, I'm like, I'm a man. Like, thinking, like, I'm supposed to... Because some people forget, being a man's actually kind of hard sometimes. Like, you know, being a man, fuck you. You're a bad, bad person for being a man. But when you... you we were taught, like, you have to be tough. You have to be a man. Mm -hmm. It's not the same as it is now where... It's like, it's okay to cry. Sure. It took me a long time to learn that. And, like, and that's when life got good. When I was like... It's like, hey, I could cry. Right. <laughs> but I remember he's like saying shit that I was like, just because I was just so insecure about things. Yeah. Being called gay. And I was like, well, fuck that. And, but that was never discussed. And I remember thinking, like looking back even to this day, I go, people don't really care about this quote I mentioned later on about um, a race issue kind of. Mm -hmm. and I go, but no one's talking about the homophobic stuff I was saying. Yeah. And that's always bothered me because I'm not that kind of person whatsoever right like and that it's where that skateboarding didn't call that out too mm. yeah i think that's very strange okay we have adults in skateboarding and they're very concerned with me using you know like out of, like not even knowing what i'm saying but using the m-word right thinking i'm a cool funny white dude so up you know yeah inward yeah. insert m bomb sure. here yeah hanging out with terry king you think i'm very funny you were hanging out with terry a lot yeah at that then, time yeah. and Thinking just funny kid, not knowing, not fully knowing the difference between what words actually mean and mm -hmm. what, I didn't even know what hate was. Right. I was 15. Yeah. Fuck, dude. Like, to be hateful at 15, I don't, you have to be really fucked up to actually have hate at 15. Sure. You know, it usually comes out of insecurities, like I said. Mm -hmm. But it tripped me out that skateboarding as a whole didn't, wasn't bringing up the fact that I said words like, no, fuck gay people or something. I don't know yeah, what I yeah, said. Yeah. I don't, 
it's not like I studied this interview. Right. I, have, I don't want anything to do with this, and I'm very ashamed of it. Yeah. But also at the same time, I've apologized for this interview since the moment it came out. Like right after one of the quotes, I said, "That's not true. I'm sorry. Like that's not actually me." And then the tone of the interview completely changed because right then, like right as I said something, yeah, I knew I was like, "What the fuck did I just do?" Like I'm. That's not me. Okay. Like right. I instantly knew. I was like, I just fucking royally fucked up. So when like, the interview was over, you were like, dude, that was I remember bad. leaving voicemails on Big Brother, Dave Carney's message, and oh, the yeah. Racco's crying, being like, dude, let's talk. Like, this is really, like, I messed up. Like, I'm really sorry. I did something that, like, I'm like, totally ashamed of. Like, right. let's talk about this. Can we redo the interview? They thought all this was funny, and they put up messages of me crying on their website. Oh, really? Yeah, Whoa. laughing about it, going, Man, fuck, this kid. Fuck, fuck this kid type thing. Yeah. As I'm like, you know, being like, fuck, this is not who I am, man. Yeah, like, yeah. really, actually, kind of heartbroken over it. I mean, like, dude, what are my friends going to think? What am I, f I didn't want to know what my family was going to think. Mm -hmm. Right. A couple months later, a box of magazines come to my house, and my parents are reading an interview because magazine subscriptions went to my parents' house. I'm living there. Yeah. We were subscribed to every magazine, and they see it in it, a magazine cover, and my name's on the cover, and they're like, oh, let's see what our son's doing. And it's like, the whole interview was all lies. Yeah. Like, when I read it a couple of years ago, I was like, oh my gosh, dude, like, who was I trying to be? Right. Not one truthful thing in the whole thing. Huh. Like, I'm not even talking about, like, the bad shit, like, just me just fully fabricating things, trying to make me sound cooler as a human being, maybe, mm. what I thought was cooler. Right. Because maybe I was, like, slightly embarrassed that I came from the suburbs and it wasn't punk enough. Mm. It's like, I'm, like, lying about shit in school not about the way my parents treated me. Mm. Just all sorts of like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking really heavy, heavy stuff, actually. Wow. That, <clears throat> and like I said, I'm super like just ashamed of. Like, right. And the problem is, this is an imprint. This is now imprint and something that I have to deal with for the rest of my life. I've been dealing with it for 18 years. Sure. But, and you know, like I was obviously very apologetic and, mm -hmm. and it's like some people, you know, apologize for things and you go, yeah, but like the thing is like with mine first off i never knew what i was really doing mm -hmm. and when, when i did fuck up it was instantly like felt that remorse like oh my gosh i just really fucked up right and i didn't but still i wasn't completely aware of how bad i fucked up because still nobody had educated me on all what i was doing wrong mm -hmm. the skateboard industry shunned me now they right. kicked me out there was still no hey Corey, let's talk to you you know when you're a good kid only guys to that, Jim Thibault and Lance Mountain. Oh, wow. Guys like that were like, we know that's not who you are. Right? Sure. You know, but the rest of the industry was ready to throw me out. Right. And which is crazy. You think if it was an industry that really cared about these raw than things I just said, mm -hmm. they would want to teach me that's not acceptable. Yeah. And not, so now I'm a confused 15 year old that just got kicked out of the skate room and still don't even know what I did wrong. Right. Like, un I know what I did wrong, but not really aware of it nobody told me what certain words like actually were i mean yeah people gonna go fuck this dude he's 15 you should know better yeah you're right and i should i didn't though that was the thing and yeah, the, yeah. i'm not scared to admit that that's yeah. like i'm not gonna say oh no that never happened yeah but do i want it washed away of course because i have apologized for it and it's come up like i said earlier there comes a point in your life you have to just finally say so what mm -hmm. you want to you want to crucify me and judge me for the rest of my life? I don't have time for that. Right, yeah. right. I've made peace with what I've done. Mm -hmm. I know I fucked up. Homeboy right here. Stevie cool Williams, shit. yeah. He had, he knew I was a kid. Yeah. He, even in his interview that came out after, Big Brother tried doing like this rebuttal thing. Like, it was like a month later. Yeah, they wanted yeah. him to talk shit and they wanted, they wanted to cause like physical harm to me. Mm. You know, because they were like, so you're going to go fucking smash this kid with a brick? Uh -oh. That's what they're saying. Like a magazine is promoting now yeah. hate towards a 15-year-old kid. Stevie was so fucking cool about this. Yeah. It took me like, I kind of understood as, stood as a kid that he was really cool. But it wasn't until kind of more recent years. So get some water. Go ahead. Go ahead. Chill. <laughs> Gain. Getting emotional. <laughs> so my, my throat is using like different you know, things. <laughs> <laughs> getting parched. So Stevie, what I was going to say, was really cool. And yeah. Re it wasn't until recent years, kind of when like a lot of this whole like 
a lot of different politically correct things have been coming out. You know, I've, I've been reevaluating my life, a lot of mm-hmm. different things. Go, man, I, I really fucked up a lot. Like I did a lot of bad things, mm-hmm. but I'm very happy knowing that's not who I am. Never was that person, but especially not today. Right. But Stevie was really cool because he said some stuff like he's a kid and he's going to have to figure out himself kind of. And Krim Campbell is the one that gave Stevie some advice. Stevie said some stuff like, hmm. I can't remember. So I can't like, I'm going to say just adjust it. But I remember that yeah, sure. granted this is 18 years ago. Of course. And like I said, I'm not reading this every day. Mm-hmm. I don't, there's not a day that I don't actually think about this because I get hate messages constantly. Oh, wow. Almost every day, every day I get an Instagram message for someone, someone maliciously attacking me. They're like, fuck you. I want you dead. Wow. Your family. Fuck your family. Like some really just gnarly stuff. Where I'm fucked. like, you guys are actually coming at me hatefully. Yeah. You know, where me, it was never meant to be hateful. I never have had a hateful bone in my body. Mm-hmm. Like I'm mm-hmm. not a hateful person. I just said some stuff that like, that was like some bad shit not without really even knowing what I was doing. Sure. But I'm like, you guys are actually coming here to attack me. And I'm like, well, man, I'm a grown person. If you want to hold me accountable for something that happened, then that's on you. Right. But if you want to stay in the past, that's cool. I'm moving forward. I want a better world for everybody. Mm-hmm. I want fucking good times, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah, all right. I, I hate war. I want peace. I want to see, you know, fucking united stuff. Like, sure. So then Stevie, back to this, no, Kareem Campbell was like steve was like my mentor kareem told me some stuff like hey he's a kid yeah don't be like be the bigger man here right and so stevie fucking actually let's say bless him Mm -hmm. took the high road and showed me what a real fucking man was right which is fucking sick dude yeah 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 where other people want to fucking still you know throw me on trial and crucify me and fucking beat me with bricks right stevie said hey i don't got time to waste for that that's whatever yeah yeah yeah. you know like he moved forward and he fucking continued to rip and kill it sure and he didn't let it drag him down and i thought that was really fucking cool yeah especially because cream campbell one of my fucking personal favorite skateboarders i had a pair of casey k's in sixth grade yeah, yeah. <laughs> i was like my back to school shoes fucking black and gum <laughs> i wanted the white and gum but my mom was like those look like nursing shoes you can't have those I was like those are the oh. best ones dude the white and i gums. wanted them so bad <laughs> my friend noche had them i didn't get them i wanted them so fucking bad <laughs> but um so to like read a quote like by kareem and stevie saying, yeah. hey let's move forward i remember thinking that was really fucking cool yeah and to this day i can still be like man that is cool of them because that actually taught me a very valuable lesson. Yeah. I mean, this whole interview you did, you realize how easy it is to fuck up on things. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And what some people don't realize, every one of us has done stuff we're ashamed of. If you say you haven't, fuck, okay, you're righteous, dude. Right. Fucking Pope. Fucking <laughs> Jesus Christ, whoever the fuck you are, must be nice. Right. Because let me tell you, I ain't no fucking saint. And I never said I was a saint. Sure. But I know I fucked up and that's something. I've accepted. I know I've come to terms with that to be a better person today. Sure. Do you ever see Stevie after that or talk yeah. to him? Yeah. Dude, yeah. it's been a couple of fucking really rad times, actually. Oh, sick. We were in Barcelona. I was in Barcelona skating like 07, 07, 08, around then. Okay. It was my first time to Barcy. I was fucking stoked. We were walking down the street. There's Stevie and Wade Desarmo and somebody oh, wow. else. And me being the guy, I'm just like, What's up, dude? Stevie Williams. What's up, dude? Yeah. Fucking sick. And then um, I didn't know Wade, but like Wade had an interview talking shit on me. And I remember like, Wade, you're sick too, dude. I read the interview. I laughed. Like he had this interview when like, I'm a black belt. I'll fucking kick the shit out of Duffel. And I was like, (laughs) and I remember being like, well, that's cool. I thought it was like a really funny interview that like Wade would stand up for his dog, you know? Sure. That's cool. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Everyone's entitled to say what they want to say. Right. But I saw Wade. He was like, I was like, what's up, dude? Sick. I was like, dude, fakey flip 5-0, like fakey flip nose grind. And he was like, you've seen my video parts? I'm like, I'm a fan of skateboarding. I fucking love skateboarding. I watch everything. Yeah. And like, you could see his attitude is kind of like, fuck, this guy, like, I might actually be kind of a nice guy. I can't judo chop this kid now. <laughs> exactly. And then so him and I are talking for a minute. I was like, hey, I read your interview. And he's like, fuck, dude, I'm sorry, I'm a kid. I go, hey, I was a kid too. Yeah. And he kind of looked at me and he goes, fuck you're right i said some really fucked up things about you without even realizing what i was do- like knowing what i was doing but not realizing 
how much this can actually affect you maybe too right i said yeah we were just kids man it's all good yeah, yeah i was yeah. like it's fucking words it's not actions you said some words if you would have come and fucking smashed me it might be a whole different story but you didn't judo chop me yeah we shook hands and then Stevie's there and you know Stevie's looking at my rings. He's like, Man, you got fucking nice rings. He showed me his rings. <laughs> oh, nicer or what? Yeah, yeah. those are pretty nice. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, my kinda came them. from the cracker jack box, you know, but uh, <laughs> kinda cool. And so it was cool. You guys were rapping right, out. And, so, yeah. and we had talked spoken before that even too. Oh, okay. Talked on the phone. Oh. I got his phone number. I think I gave him a phone call, you know, after the whole thing happened. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he was once again cool enough to actually Listen to my phone call. Listen to a kid crying about what was going on. Sure. And, you know, and like once I said, he he uh, he kind of, I think, understood the context of the thing and knew it wasn't me like trying to have like, it wasn't like some hate crime. Right. It wasn't like, I hate this or fuck these type of people right, or anything. Right. It was just me explaining a story and using a word that I thought was like, kind of acceptable maybe mm-hmm. because i would see in skateboard videos i'd watch, read in magazines constantly it was all over the place yeah. it wasn't censored i had no clue and i'm hanging out with the kids that are saying it mm-hmm. and so i didn't realize me being fucking white dude yeah what the fuck i was doing i just thought it was cool like i thought i was like a cool rock star or something like oh tk tells me it's cool yeah 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 it's all good bro you know like fucking total just dummy right I mean, that's all i can say is completely fucked wow it's like it's really heavy like when i think back i go i mean that's all it is is ignorance it's complete ignorance yeah yeah and then that that was kind of the end of it that, that was, was it. like it happened and then it's like then the interview just kept rolling there was never like hey let's talk about this or yeah where is this hate coming from because if we would have discussed that i'm mean, like hate what are you talking about yeah um, it's you know, like oh, I was just giving Stephen Williams props because I thought this guy had a gun and he was like all flared out. I was like, he reminded me of a thug that the guys I saw in magazines looked like too. And I was mm-hmm. like, I'm I'm giving someone props. That's how like stupid I was about something. Right. He's been like, dude, what? Like it's so dumb. Like looking back now, I was just like, what the fuck was wrong with me? Yeah. And but then to be labeled for something for years and years upon it upon something never actually mean if i was ever hateful it came from me being like okay i'm people are saying i'm hateful should i become a hateful person then because and that's right. so that actually became a problem not that i became some like fucking bigot or something yeah yeah but also i was like okay people hate me fuck them fuck everybody then mm-hmm. you hate me fuck you too i don't give a shit yeah. you know that was like became my thing is nobody came to nourish me and right. let me know hey you fucked up but accidents happen let's put you on the higher road sure yeah. lance tr- lance was the guy that tried yeah. and like i said i didn't realize how cool that was not back then right but now looking back i'm like what a fucking angel mm-hmm. lance madden was like trying to get me back onto like a straight path sure as i mean i know that sounds very biblical or something but he was trying to like be like just because you like punk rock doesn't mean you have to be such an upstart. Like, mm-hmm. you could still, like, it's not only about chaos. Sure. And he yeah. was the guy that taught me that stuff. Because before, at, four, you know, 13 through 15, I mean, there I am with, like, Sid Vicious on my wall, fucking photos of, like, Iggy Pop, you know, cutting himself, cutting himself up and just really, like, gnarly imagery yeah. all over my bedroom walls. And, like, this shit's cool cash from chaos like destruction fuck the world ah like right thinking that shit was really cool because we're i'm not gonna lie as a teenager i was under the influence of a lot of shit you know sure and i mean still i'm i still get psyched i watch a skate video and i go damn i want to do that trick that looks fun as hell <laughs> yeah. you know like, yeah yeah i'm still very yeah, much do. that way mm-hmm. but obviously i i know how to like control it and be like okay i'm not gonna just blatantly be a fucking complete ch- like ch- whatever I don't even know just, yeah, yeah, yeah whatever yeah. just a complete dumbass right and be like okay I have to mimic this stuff it's okay to like be your own person exactly yeah and at 15 I was not being myself and right. that's the main thing I was not myself I went from being like a really like nice kid mm-hmm. to being like oh I discovered punk I want to be <laughs> spitting at people pissing in public 
just being fucking lame. And you got to love Stevie too for, you know, being seeing man. it, being the, being, taking the high road and, and knowing this isn't, th- this isn't what it looks like. You know what and, I mean? Like he's just a kid. And, and every interview I've ever had, like, I mean, I address it. It gets brought up every time. Oh, d- yeah, and I'm sure. people never, people always like, every day thinks it's like they're, they're like discovering something new. Like they try, to, they try to call me out all the time. Like, yeah. Fucking problem. I'm sure this lot message boards loves it. Whatever. You know, people are like, oh dude, I just discovered this thing about this guy, Corey. Right. Have you ever heard about this interview? Big Brother, August 2000? Whew. And I'm like, yeah, that's yesterday's papers. Right. Like, it was, it's been addressed You've and it's going it, to yeah. be addressed for the rest of my life. And, yeah. But now I'm at a point, like I said, I'm just saying, so what? Yeah. I made a fucking mistake, man. And I'm fine. Like I've owned up to it for a long time. Sure. It caused a lot of depression in my life for a long time. I mean, severe depression. Mm. Knowing, like, I put shame on me, my family, friends. Yeah, yeah. And it's like for a long time. It's I've had like very bad social anxiety, all from this interview from a 15 year old kid. Crazy. Which is it's fucked. Yeah. Even coming to this interview before, I was almost going to send text message to Kelly going, I can't do it. I was talking to like Rachel back home, different oh, yeah. friends. They're like. You gotta do. You're doing it right. They're like you have so many funny stories. I'm like, I don't know if I can. I was like, I'm fucking getting really nervous. I was like, and it's all because doing one interview without having some kind of guidance, mm-hmm. or even if I was a smart enough kid and didn't want to be clever, like think I was funny, I would have asked my like, even like my, my father. But like, hey, Dad, I'm about to do this interview. Should maybe I be on speakerphone for this or? Oh who yeah. Who knows? I right, don't know. Right, but right. Skateboarding was different back then. Yeah, and you t- yeah. and you you don't think about that kind of shit when you're a kid. You're just no. like, oh fuck it, I'm gonna do this fucking interview. interview. Yeah, yeah. Big Brother up. magazine. Yeah. Like I got this thing going. I like picked up the phone. And just was like, fuck yeah, right. woo! Right, <laughs> right into it. Have you ever talked to Naratko about it? He always would be like, anytime I've seen him, he goes, "I made you. I made you." I'm oh like, really? And I'm like, actually, <laughs> you did nothing but fucking cause me harm throughout my entire life. You've caused like some terror like lost like some sponsorships over this like, yeah, people yeah. who won't endorse me like right because all of a sudden you go on google the first thing that comes out it's like duffel oh, racist it's crazy. like you get along fine yeah yeah because like i once again when am i gonna sit there and go fuck this guy he destroyed my life mm. whatever guess what i said those things sure yeah. at the end of the day i fucked up right right you know did he contribute to it too sure i would think so right but it happened you know like, yeah he was a dumb kid too. And that's the thing. Big brother was also, they were like 18 to 25 year old kids too. Mm. And their whole thing was to talk shit. Yeah. Right. Just trying to get shock value. Yeah. yeah. And that's why I saw shock value. Yeah. Right. I was like, Hustler Magazine, sick. I'm going to get mm-hmm. some shock value. <laughs> and it wasn't cool. Right. And that's the end of the, I mean, the end of the story. It wasn't fucking cool. Right. Right. I'm very well aware that it wasn't cool. Mm-hmm. I've been aware of that for 18 years, 17 years, however long it's been. Yeah. And for when, Chris to go, oh, I made you. It's like, actually, no, you just caused me a lot of harm and a lot of grief and a lot of suicidal thoughts over my years. I mean, like, cause I've been very depressed over this type right, of stuff. Right. But I'm like, fuck, should I just take the easy way out? And it all comes from one interview at 15 years old, which is crazy to think that nearly 20 years later, I could still have social anxiety sure. because people want to think you're still something that they never even want to get the chance to get to know you. Mm-hmm, it's just very mm-hmm. easy to be like, oh, that's you. Right, you said yeah. these words. And it's like, hey, let's put a tape recorder in your car when you're you know, in your bedroom when you're 15 with a group of your friends. And let's print that now because I know everybody has said something that they never actually meant. But you look at it now, you go, oh, shit. That was fucked that's, up, yeah. <laughs> like, as fucked up as it is, we've all, all said, you know, homosexual like stuff homophobic things mm. without even thinking of it that way you just like like me looking at kelly's like legs back i'm like man those shorts are kind of you know gay and that would have been like total normal skate banter back then sure yeah. and you never meant harm by it no and then it took me becoming friend like when my when my best friends as a teenager came out of the closet mm. everything changed him because guess what now i'm being educated on it sure my best friend nick at the time one of my skate buddies his coming out of the closet video was Nick J is gay. And we had no clue. We're like, when he told us he was gay, we're like, oh, that's cool. Like, it was like nothing. Like, yeah, we yeah. were driving down to the San Luis Abyss by the skate. And like, we're all just goof off having laughs. And he goes, hey guys, I got something to say. He's like, I'm gay. And we're like, yeah. So what we're going to skate today, what, what, what <laughs> we're going to go eat. Wasn't a and big deal. And then he was like, yeah. no, I'm actually, 
this is really hard for me to tell you guys, but I'm gay. And we were like, yeah, okay. So you got some doubts you want to say? Like, it wasn't like even thought about. But then after that happened, some of those words were just fucking thrown out the window. I was like, okay, this is not in my vocabulary sure, anymore. Right. Because now I have somebody that I look up to, who I love, yeah. letting me know what, what some of these words mean. For and that sure. they're hurtful. Yeah. And so education is a huge thing. If we don't educate people, you're not going to ever grow. You're not going to change. We're going to keep encouraging hate and violence, whatever. Right. So I got lucky that some of this stuff did happen to me at a young age. Mm -hmm. But then also a lot of fucking social anxiety from it too. Yeah. Going, oh, jeez, fuck. Oh, man. You know, yeah, it's, all yeah. kind of, it's all over the place. <laughs> is it like 10 years from now, there's going to be some kid that finally finds your big brother interview and then he's going to be like, Fuck this dude. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. That's just the... And you're going to like have to deal with it all over again. You could tell it's, him to say, watch my nine club. Yeah. That's what I would. <laughs> <laughs> and there's been a whole research and stuff, like that, but yeah. like I said, all I could do is move forward. Sure. I own it. I, I, I fucking apologized over and over. I mean, this is right, shit. Right, right. Yeah. And different thing is, anybody that knows me would be like, what the fuck are you talking about? I mean, best yeah. friend and my wife would come to my defense. And yeah. when people see me, like my entourage or people I hang out with, some people are always shocked. Like, they, oh, I guess they were expecting me to be, you know, fucking only white boy dude. But they're right. like, holy shit. Cause the thing is, I love skateboarding. You think I give a shit with anybody else? To, right. You know a skateboarder? Like how all of us were. Mm -hmm. yeah. You fucking skate, dude? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you think you care if somebody's fucking purple or anything? You're like... You're fucking 12 feet tall. You're fucking neon green, dude. Yeah. Shit, let's be friends. Yeah. You actually, you're neon green. That's fucking pretty cool, dude. <laughs> Can we really be friends? <laughs> you know, like, that's the, it's so strange. Skateboarding brings us all together, man. It truly does. Mm -hmm. yeah. It brings you to different neighborhoods. It brings everyone and it fucking rolls. Yeah. And that's why when often you get labeled as something, it's like, well, that sucks because that's what I love about skipping is the diversity. Sure. Too. Yeah, you're going to meet so many different people from so many different areas. And anywhere and you go in the world, anywhere. it's like straight nuts. You're like, yeah. hey, I just came from California. Oh, sick, man. You need a place to stay? Exactly. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah. And but I've been fortunate enough where I have a bunch of older people and friends who are, you know, obviously not like me, mm -hmm. but they're like, they talk to me like, hey, man, you're the one that needs to let like, things go. Like. And so finally, it took it took me a long time to yeah, realize yeah. that. But my friend Lulu, this guy Luigi in Paris, um, he was kind of one of the guys like going, Corey, man, it's like, you got to just like not worry about what these Instagram messages people say. Cause I never cared before. Really. Sure. And but now when you can see like direct hate mail straight to you on a DM, it's hard to like to get that stuff out. No, oh, totally. It's hard to sleep at night sometimes, actually. You know? No, like, for sure. I bet, yeah. And that's weird to be 34 years old and still haunted by something at 15. Right. That's... Fucking crazy. It is crazy. <laughs> like, I'm sure you guys are going, wow, you actually... Like, you guys might have not might not have ever known that I even thought about this. But this is, like, stuff that has, like, seriously been, like, giving me, like, suicidal nights. Been like, fuck, Jeez. I don't know. Right, have right. You ever, do you ever, like, write back? To these kids or whoever is writing? I try, but that's just... You then you open up a, a whole, whole like a whole can of worms. Where, yeah. Like I said, if you... You're adding fuel to the fire. Yeah. If you yeah. start responding to people. Yeah, exactly. Stuff, uh, there's so, no point. But if I... I mean, I've made posts about this on like my social media before, like mm -hmm. explaining, you know, like some past things I've said that I'm not like... That I'm not proud of. Mm -hmm. And, you know, most people are like, oh, that's cool. And then, you know, there'll be occasionally, you know, the typical troll that goes, you know, said some shit. But then you'll see like all sorts of different people from all sorts of different backgrounds like coming like to my defense i'm like well that's pretty cool dude sure yeah. yeah it's definitely really awesome and i think it's important too that puts your mind at ease it's like the guy stevie williams is <laughs> is forgiving and that's what i was saying in the beginning that's what's been so cool about yeah. him the whole time and actually in the newest issue of thrasher there's like a little thing that came out it was like talking about this, they called people I know or something. Mm -hmm. And they gave me like 15 different names to like reply. Of course, they threw Stevie out there. Sure. Or actually, they didn't give me Stevie. I chose to put Stevie on here. Oh, okay. It's the last one. You know, it's talking about just different friends that yeah, yeah. on tour with, like funny, stupid stories. Some pretty good ones, maybe. Yeah. Maybe it's a good laugh. People get my sense of humor, they'll definitely have a laugh. Right. But Stevie's was the only one where it wasn't so much, a, it wasn't a joke. I, I addressed the whole thing going, hey, 
this is just a shout out to Steve Williams. Yeah. For fucking, you know, like being a G. Sure. Like it's pretty fucking cool, man. He is a G. Yeah. Such a nice yeah. guy yeah, too, the, man. He's he's a great dude. And he's fucking skating so good. Oh right my now god. Too. It's so yeah, it's cool. yeah, it's so rad. So then like when I back to like Barcelona, seen him. I remember like we were having a conversation. He's like, I like your denim. And like Stevie's giving me a compliment on my pants. And <laughs> right. He was like, I like fashion a lot these days. He's like, you got your own shit going on too. That's cool. Right. And I remember like, and like it was like we gave each other like the knocks and the hug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yeah, laughing. Yeah. And then, it's then amazing. We had, then we had a session in Barcelona a couple days later. Great. And then even a couple of years after that, we were at like a Trans World Awards, like video premiere awards, like 2010. Mm -hmm. And we presented an award together. Ooh. And I think a lot of the people were like, what the fuck? Yeah. The fucking, I remember yeah. being like, this is cool, man. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember who we presented it to because all I can remember being like, still being a fan of Lil Stevie. Sure. Switch heel flip and fucking poofy Adidas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> you like everything that's different from you. And For I'm seeing sure. these guys doing tricks I couldn't do. I'm a fucking basic beige skateboarder. I have stock tricks. I'm beige <laughs> as fuck, dude. <laughs>